اوكي <تصفيق> Okay. So, so we saw that um, Paul giving, um, you know, giving a very valuable key um, uh, for for our anxiety, you know, for those of us who are anxious and uh, and worried and so on. Is saying, um, you know, giving us a very valuable, um, very, very very valuable truth uh, about not being anxious about anything. Uh, if if we thought okay so there are some big things that i can be anxious about and there are some you know small small things that i should not be anxious about you know sometimes we 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 think no okay if i if there is a big problem or some challenge then i have to be anxious you know it's not right to be not anxious but um but you know this is what paul very clearly outlines for us right and which is a secret for his joy also you know one is of course uh, he's he's got the joy of the lord uh, which is by the work of the spirit so he's the joy of the lord is strengthening him and just uh, you know the river of the holy spirit just flowing out ministering to so many um, you know all that is happening but also we see that uh, you know this is a secret you know this is a this is a key why or how can he say that how can he persist and persevere in ministry um, even from a place of imprisonment and how can he say you know rejoice in the lord and again i will say rejoice right how can he say that uh, it's because of this that um, when he's anxious he obviously went to the lord with a request a prayer and supplication and thanksgiving you know make the request known to god and then what would have happened is that um, the peace of god he'll experience the peace of god by the power of his spirit by the power of the holy spirit by experiencing the supernatural peace of god and the peace of god would guard his heart and mind from every attack of anxiety you know every attack of panic every attack of fear uh, the peace of god will guard his heart and mind like like a like a armed security guard like an armed soldier Right? the peace of god would um guard his heart and mind through christ jesus okay <clears throat> and in line with the same thing you know um uh, when we read uh, verse 8 this is what we see finally brethren okay which means uh, uh, at the end of it all finally brethren this is something that i want you to do finally brethren whatever things are true whatever things are noble whatever things are just whatever things are pure whatever things are lovely whatever things are of good report if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy okay so is list down a few things if it is true noble just pure lovely good report virtuous praiseworthy meditate on these things okay so this is another thing let your mind be on these things let your thoughts be on these things instead of things that uh, you know worry you right let your mind be on these things you meditate on these things okay and uh, and is is very clear so you just think deeply think on these things um and and the word he uses there the the greek word it means that you know you you uh, it's a, it's a accounting term you know like to come to a conclusion you know consider everything and con- come to a conclusion come to the uh, to the answer and uh, so he's saying compute calculate and come to that final answer okay so it, it's like saying you know you make a in other words he's saying you make a decision you need to make a decision meditate on these things think on these things right um and the greek word is logizomai which means uh, you decide you determine um you take into account you weigh the matter and think about these things 
come to a conclusion about these things. Okay. So saying uh, something very important. So not only do you pray and commit the matter to God, right? The peace of God is anyway going to be uh, uh, as a security guard. It's going to protect your heart and mind. Um, but these things, things that are of these qualities, okay? Um, if things are true, noble, just, pure, lovely, good report, virtuous, praiseworthy, you think about these things. Let your mind be occupied with these things. Okay, so does that mean that I, you know, if there's something negative that is going on in the world, you know, if there's suffering in the world, if there's something, you know, problems to be solved, does that mean that I should not think about this? No. Saying, you know, beyond that, that go beyond that. Right? What is the solution? What is the answer? Is not Christ, Christ's wisdom, is not Christ's um, uh Christ's intervention is is that not the final thing? Is not the word of God, you know, dictating something over and above that situation? Is not the cross of God? Is not cross cross of Christ? Is not that the final victory? Is not the cross dictating the final victory over the matter? Right? Uh, does it not have the final say in the matter? Therefore, go beyond the problem and. Think about these things because these are good things that Christ has overcome. These are good things that the Lord will intervene. These are good things that the Lord, Lord's hand. It's not that we don't suffer with the people who are suffering. You know, Paul also talks about that. You know, we put um, the Lord Jesus says, you know, we put those who weep, rejoice with those who rejoice. So, yeah, we will do that. What he's saying, you know, in your mind, you think about the, you know, even, you know, when it comes to bereavement, when it comes to weeping, you know. Like Paul says, right, uh, in 1 Thessalonians, he says, you know, we grieve as those with hope. We do not grieve as those without hope, right? How? You think about what is the final picture, what is the final outcome? The Lord will come. You, those who are asleep, uh, sleep in Christ will rise first. The dead in Christ will rise first. So you, when you think about those things, when you meditate on these things, those are things of good report, right? You, you, you know the problem is. It's not like saying I don't have a problem or I don't have a challenge, but you're going beyond that and thinking about what is the answer, right? Is is it not from Christ? What does God in Christ declare about this particular problem, right? So go beyond that. Think about these things, and He says. Uh, meditate on these things, the things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do. Okay, So that's first part of the instruction. So saying the things that you learned. Okay? So obviously, I've taught you, I've, uh, you know, uh, teach, I've taught you certain things, the things that you learned and the things that you received. Or maybe there's an impartation. You know, I laid hands and prayed. He says, you know, things that you, you know, the gift of God that you receive through the laying on of hands, he tells Timothy, right? So by the eldership, so people laid hands, they prayed and by prophecy and you received a gift. Okay. And he also, you know, tells um, the, Corinthian, uh, was the Corinthian church that he says, you know, I, I long to see you that I might impart to you some gift. Okay. Um, that is also something that he says that, uh, that I might come and I imp impart to you some gift. So, so things that you learned from me, the things that you received from me, okay, and the things that you, he says two other things, right? The things that you heard and saw in me, okay? So not only, uh, you know, my teaching, but you also saw certain things. Uh, learned, received, heard, saw. Okay? You heard and saw. In my conversations, you heard me. And you saw what kind of life that I live and what kind of decisions I made, uh, like how I was when I faced problems, whatever you, you know, the things that you learned, you received, you heard and saw, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. Okay, that's the assurance. Yeah, you will experience the presence of God. Okay, it's very, very clear saying, whatever things I've taught, that's the truth, the truth that I've received by revelation. 
right so if you do these things you will experience god's presence the peace of the so god of peace will be with you. earlier he talks about the peace of god here he talks about the god of peace himself he says the god of peace will be with you you will experience the god of peace right you will experience his presence you will experience his power you will experience his touch so the god of peace will be with you okay okay let's read from verse 10 Uh, chapter 4 verse 10 but i rejoiced in the lord greatly that now at last your care for me has flourished again though you surely did care but you lack opportunity not that i speak in regard to need for i have learned in whatever state i am to be content i know how to be abased and i know how to abound everywhere and in all things i have learned both to be full and to be hungry both to abound and to suffer need i can do all things through christ who strengthens me nevertheless you have done well that you shared in my distress and now you philippians know of parted from macedonia no church shared with me concerning giving and receiving but you only or even in thessalonica you sent aid once and again for my necessities not that i seek the gift but i seek the fruit that abounds to your account indeed i have all and abound i am full having received from epaphroditus the things sent from you a sweet smelling aroma an acceptable sacrifice well pleasing to god and my god shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by christ jesus now to our god and father be glory forever and ever amen okay so he's saying you know i rejoice greatly because you know i receive the things that you have sent and uh, uh, you have an opportunity to uh, you know to uh, that your care you know you're able to care for me again and uh, obviously they sent something through epaphro epaphroditus so he received that whatever offering whatever that uh, for his needs and for the needs of the you know maybe the church uh they have sent it and he says you know i i rejoice in that greatly okay um you it's not that you did not know of my needs or but you lacked the opportunity in the sense you didn't know how to get through you know those things to me but now you've sent it through epaphroditus and he says uh, you know a sweet smelling uh, offering right okay so then he says that um um not that i speak in regard to need for i have learned something okay so he's sharing something very important i have learned whatever state i am to be content okay to be in a place of contentment okay so paul when he writes to timothy he also says you know earlier uh, in, in one of the epistles he says godliness uh, timothy chapter 1 uh, sorry chapter 6 i think uh, he says godliness with contentment is great gain Okay, godliness with contentment right so this um, contentment is something very very important okay so it means um, irrespective of what's happening around i'm in a place of satisfaction okay um even though things might be difficult even though there might not be much but i'm still satisfied i right. i'm still content i'm in a place of contentment okay so <clears throat> which is something very very powerful so um which means he's not dissatisfied you know with the external things which uh, which the with the problems with the struggles because of which his life is not thrown out of balance right he's content the things that he has which is very inspiring verse 11 i know how to be abased and i know how to abound everywhere and in all things i have learned both to be full and to be hungry both to abound and to suffer need so he's saying this has been my experience you know i know how to be how to be abased how to abound like if you see <clears throat> sorry uh if you see paul's ministry journey right he went from antioch then he goes to you know we read about that like john mark was with them and he went to that island perfos and uh, he was a guest of the governor there right so which means uh, 
you know he would have stayed in a, you know comfortable place he would have had a gov- he was he was a guest right so he would have been partaking pair partaking of you know the governor's food whatever was served and had the best of hospitality but also you know that he suffered shipwreck you read that in the last few chapters of the i mean the 28th chapter 27 28 you read about how he was shipwrecked and how he was um, uh, you know he almost died the viper the snake which bit his hand uh, in the island so you know we, we we read about that in cyprus you know all, all that he went through so he's saying you know i know how to be full and to be hungry both to abound and to suffer need okay so uh, in all these things you know I, this has been my experience and i'm i'm content right i have learned in whatever state i am to be content right for the and this is all for the sake of christ and he says in verse 13 in that context you know he this is what he says in, the, in this context of um, contentment and uh, you know all the difficulties that i'm going through says uh, um first thing he says you know i have learned to know everything to be content verse 13 he says i can do all things through christ who strengthens me now the state of contentment this persevering this persisting even though there are difficulties right he does it he says i can do these things through christ who strengthens me okay this is the lord jesus who strengthens me so i can you know i can do all things right so it is in that context that he share, shares that truth i can do all things through christ who strengthens me so whether there are whether i have plenty or whether i have none whether i'm ministering in a fantastic place you know where everything is taken care of or i'm ministering in a very difficult place uh where there's persecution and you know prison and uh, and so on uh you know i can do all things yeah i can face it i can do all those things through christ through the lord jesus who's my strength right who strengthens me okay and uh, says in verse 14 nevertheless you have done well that you shared in my distress now and he goes on to talk about how uh, when he went from macedonia you know no church helped except his except um, you know the the church in in the macedonian area area which included philippi and verse 18 uh, you know i'm just going down uh verse, verse 17 he says i seek the fruit that abounds to your account because of your giving because of your investing and partnering with ministry obviously there is a return there is a there is a fruit you know you're getting something that god is not you know um, is not going to be negligent of all this you know, there is a fruit which abounds to your account and so i you know i i look forward to that i seek that gift that uh, not that i seek the you know sorry not that i seek the gift but i seek the fruit that you will experience out of your partnership in ministry and out of your you know generous giving okay uh he says i have all and i abound i am full having received from epaphroditus you have sent these things to epaphroditus and i have received it it's a an an acceptable sacrifice well pleasing to god you know it's like an offering to god okay uh, like we see the similar thing when we read uh, hebrews 13 okay hebrews 13 where there is a <clears throat> connection between the worship of god there's a connection between giving to people and god being pleased with that okay so we see um, hebrews 13 and verse 15 uh, it says therefore by him let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to god that is the fruit of our lips giving thanks to his name so he's saying you know this when you give praise to him when you give thanks to him you know out of your heart and you know out of your mouth when you declare now uh, that is like a sacrifice that is the sacrifice of praise going before god okay then he he also says but do not forget to do good and to share for with such sacrifices god is well pleased okay so don't forget to do good good deeds and to share you know taking care of people's needs maybe sharing what you have with others 
for with such sacrifices right so earlier he's talking about the sacrifice of praise here is talking about some sacrifice with such sacrifices which means that it is something like a sacrifice which comes before god an offering that comes before god when we take care of others needs when we you know do in partner in ministry and so on so it's a an acceptable so going back to colossians 4:18 paul says an acceptable sacrifice well pleasing to god so same thing in hebrews also we see that god is well pleased with such when you do when you do good and to share god is well pleased so he says here also it's a it's a sacrifice <clears throat> to god was 19 and my god shall supply all your need my god shall supply all your need now the the macedonians you know the church they gave out of their poverty it's not like they had great riches and then great wealth and they gave no they saw the need of need for of paul they saw the need of other churches and they gave despite the fact that they didn't have much right and uh, they gave out of their poverty they gave believing in god so paul in fact talks about this church to the corinthian church and he says you know they this is how they give this is how they minister to me and to the saints out of their poverty deep poverty they still gave right so he says uh, and he says he knows their need he knows that they they were not very wealthy they were not very well off so he says and my god <clears throat> this is the promise my god you know god says right he who uh, you know in proverbs we read he who gives to the poor lends to the lord right um so it's like you know it's like god taking care of that you know um god is mindful of that and he's a debtor to no one he's a debtor he's going to pay back right so and my god shall supply all your need he will provide for all your need according to his riches in glory so, so that supply comes from the reserve of his riches so how much does he have to give okay so how much can he give so if he has uh you know a bank account how much does he have in that and out of which he's going to give right so according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus he's going to supply all your need so is is reassuring word from you know from the scriptures we see that god will supply all your need and he will supply it according to his riches according to his bank balance and we know that everything that we see around belongs to him right now to our god and father be glory forever and ever uh, closing comments and greetings it says greet every saint in christ jesus the brethren who are with me greet you all the saints greet you but especially those who are of caesar's household the grace of our lord jesus christ be with you all amen so this is how he closes the letter okay that uh, mentioning the brethren mentioning the saints um those who are in caesar's household and then he says okay the grace of our lord jesus christ be with you all amen okay so that brings us to the end of uh, philippians we've seen um uh, in short four short chapters uh, we've seen paul addressing the church in philippi and talking about how the lord will complete the work that he started started in them um and he's talking about his own struggle his own you know imprisonment and his uh, outlook you know when he's imprisoned saying that you know i'm i'm happy um, you know that, uh, that everyone has come to know why i'm imprisoned the palace guard it's it's for the sake of the gospel so and he's also happy that even though there are some outside who are preaching the gospel out of selfish motives and attitudes he's saying you know i'm still happy because whether in pretense or in truth christ is being preached the word is going out i'm happy and he's talking about <clears throat> uh him wanting to see them again right but he's saying you know for me to live is christ and to die is gain uh for me you know i feel it's far better that i go and be with christ but still 
what is beneficial to you is that I remain and continue to minister and that there will be fruit in my ministry for sure. Okay. And he says, let your conduct be worthy. And, uh, and in, in Philippians chapter 2, we saw that he's saying, you know, let this mind be in you in Christ Jesus. What kind of mind? What kind of mindset? Who the Lord of glory, he uh, laid aside his majesty. He, he made himself of no reputation. He emptied himself and he became, he took on the form of a bond servant, right? Who for the joy that was set before him took on uh, the 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 death of the cross, right? Um, and then God has given him the name that is above every other name, that every knee should bow, every tongue should confess that Jesus is Lord. Okay, so that is the highly exalted place that he has. Um, and he then talks to the believers and he says, you do everything without complaining, without com grumbling, that you may be faultless, that you may be lights, you may be blameless in this generation. Okay, then we saw, you know, Paul addressing uh, about circumcision, those who were stressing about circumcision, and he's saying, you know, beware of such people, right? Beware of, um, you know, use the same words that the Jewish people used to call the non-Jewish people, you know, in a derogatory term, right? He used to call them dogs. So he says, you know, beware of dogs. You know, he's referring to the Jewish people this time who were emphasizing circumcision and the law. So he's saying, beware of them. Um, and so he says, you know, if I was like this. Uh, I was zealous, persecuting the church. This was my qualification. This was my lineage from the tribe of Benjamin. I was I was circumcised and, and all this. But I counted all laws for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ. And uh, and then he, so he, he tells them how they should live their life, pressing on, laying hold of the things which Christ has laid hold of us. So which means that the things of faith, right? Not the things of the going back to the law, but things, the revelation, the current now truth, lay hold of that, the call of God, lay hold of that, have a firm grip of that because Christ has come and he's holding you, you know, for this very reason. And then chapter four, of course, all that we um, said just now, all that we learned just now, he's saying, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Be anxious for nothing. So he's, uh, you know, how can I rejoice? How can I, you know, not be anxious. Um, the truth is, the, the key is this, to, <clears throat> to go before him, to whatever is troubling, you know, don't hold it back, right? Don't hold it back. Uh, don't just keep thinking about those troubles, but whatever is troubling you, whatever needs you have, lay it before the Lord. Let everything, you know, in requests, supplication, thanksgiving, with prayer, supplication, and thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God will guard you. And then he says, think about those things, things that are good, noble. You know, One thing is the promises of God. What does God promise about the problem? Instead of the problem, instead of trying to you know, uh, meditate on the problem, the bigness of it, the scariness of it, um, you know, how, uh, uh, how destructive those things are, Instead of meditating on that, you know, go beyond the problem and meditate about the solution, you know, the promises of God, what God has promised, what God said he will do. Meditate on these things. And the God of peace will be with you. His presence, his power, you will experience, right? Um, and then what we saw just now. Okay. So with that, we come to an end of uh, Philippians. So what we'll do is uh, let's start off on Colossians. Okay. Colossians also... A uh, very short epistle, you know, it, we have four chapters just like Philippines, but uh, a lot of things are packed here in Colossians, okay? So um, let's take some time to study Colossians. Um, so Colossians, uh, we see, uh, you know, if we read about the historical background and, uh, and the way in which Paul starts the letter, uh, mm -hmm. the truth that he's emphasizing, we see that probably there were some challenges to the, um, this is of course a non-Jewish church, you know, challenges about um, the deity of Christ. Okay. Uh, because all these other churches, like, I mean, all these areas or regions had, um, you know, various kinds of beliefs, right? 
uh, various kinds of worship. And um, Paul wanted to make it very clear that uh, about the deity of Christ, that he was not one of the many, but he was um, he was the Lord and Savior. And so he even goes back to say, you know, uh, even the stories of creation. Now, every uh, every world view or every world religion has its own, um, you know, story of creation. Okay, how things came into being, um, and uh, a story, maybe something mythological, even uh, which they know. That is, it's not the truth, but they say, okay, this is how it, it's like a story it is told, right? And uh, sometimes that mythology will cross the line of reason and uh, people would sometimes take it as a legend, take it as a something that is true, right? So Paul is actually emphasizing a lot of things in the letter, saying the deity of Christ, um, he's talking about, um, you know, the, the, the sufferings of Christ. He's talking about even the Judaism, Right, the law and everything, and how that is not going to help. Um, but he talks about the cross, and then he talks about the new man or the new creation, and so on. So, uh, so wonderful, interesting. Uh, the book of Col uh, Colossians, right? Uh, we see that uh, he's writing to the believers in Colossae. And Colossae, let me just uh, quickly go down to the map. Um, it was, uh, you know. Yeah, I'll just go down to that. It's a, it's in a valley, and uh, it's close to the city of Laodicea, Hierapolis, and it's also close to Ephesus, like we see here. I'm just highlighting this. Uh, 100 miles east of Ephesus. So to the west of uh, Philippi, oh, sorry, Colossae, we had uh, the Ephesus. So it's in modern-day Turkey, right, Asia Minor, and it's in the region called Phrygia. Um, it's also the the neighboring province to Phrygia was Galatia, so it's in that region, and um, it was a small town. Um, you know, Laodicea, Hierapolis. You know, there were a lot of uh, there were other Christian uh, congregations. It was a small town, but it had different religions. It had different cultural influences. It was a, it had a good trade, and also. <clears throat> it had uh, people were known for their you know kind of a not so good lifestyle um they loved alcohol they had their wines and you know they lived uh, you know like a partying kind of life and um, so this was a town which where or, or a church where paul did not um visit like he had not visited colosse uh, but he had heard of colosse uh, probably Epaphras was, he mentions Epaphras, Epaphras as one of the person, one of their own, and, <clears throat> you know, he is, uh, so he knows about, about uh, the believers there, and um, he gives thanks to God when he, because he has heard of their faith uh, in the Lord Jesus, right, and he prays for them, uh, just like uh, in uh, what we saw in Ephesians, he prays two very powerful prayers um, uh, uh, for them, over them. And I pray this, you know, that this would happen and so on, right? So he prays that. And uh, so when was it, uh, of course, the author being Paul, when was it written? Probably around AD 60 to AD 62. Um, and he was in prison again when he wrote this. So again, it's one of those prison epistles, right? He was prison in Rome. And uh, he, it was the same time when he wrote Ephesians and Philemon. So, um these letters were sent through Tychicus and Onesimus. Um, yeah. So, uh, you know, you look at the map, you see the region. So you see um, Colosse here. You see all the other neighboring, you know, uh, Colosse here. And, um, you know, and we see, sorry. Oops. Okay. So we see uh, Philippi here. You know, Thessalonica, Corinth, Ephesus, uh, and so on, right? So we see um, even these towns of uh, zoom in, and you see these towns of um, cities of Hierapolis and La Laodicea. Laodicea being mentioned in the Book of Revelation as well. 
like as a lukewarm church so we see you know all these surrounding areas we see these churches uh, all these regions where believers were there okay okay let's go into uh, chapter 1 okay let's uh, let's read through okay okay paul an apostle of jesus christ by the will of god and timothy our brother to the saints and faithful brethren in christ who are in colosse grace to you and peace from god our father and the lord jesus christ so typically how he addresses every church he addresses this church as well saints faithful brethren who are in christ in colosse and he he wishes them or he declares grace and peace uh, over them uh, he knows the value of these two uh, he knows the value of the grace of god he knows the value of the peace of god peace from god so he uh, declares them he wishes that for them right verse 3 we give thanks to the god and father of our lord jesus christ praying always for you since we heard of your faith in christ jesus and of your love for all the saints because of the hope which is laid up for you in heaven of which you heard before in the word of truth of the gospel which has come to you as it also as it has also in all the world and is bringing forth fruit as it is also among you since the day you heard and knew the grace of god in truth as you also learned from epaphras our dear fellow servant who is a faithful minister of christ on your behalf who also declare to us your love in the spirit okay so he's all is saying you know i thank god for you i thank i give thanks to the god and father of our lord jesus christ and we pray always for you okay so he's heard of this church he's been minister this church has been probably planted by epaphras but epaphras is the person who has been you know who he says is the faithful minister of christ on your behalf so um epaphras is um, you know uh which is uh, maybe probably brought the gospel probably taught them uh, whether whatever he did you know he did whether he did the work of sowing whether he did a watering epaphras is involved in that and he says you know um ever since we heard of your faith and your love for all the saints you know i give thanks to god so we've been praying for you and uh, and also what is not noted is uh, their hope which is laid up the hope which is laid up for them in heaven okay um and uh, because of the hope they have and the hope that is uh, the hope of the glory of god right uh, which they have heard in the word through the gospel okay saying okay what is laid up for you in heaven the everything the inheritance and everything that you're going to experience all right which is uh, which is going to be your reality um when you are redeemed fully redeemed um everything that you uh, you know that is for you uh, we give thanks to god for that and we pray for that uh, pray to you pray to the lord for you right and it's bearing fruit and you've heard and you know the grace of god in truth okay and uh, you've also learned from epaphras our fellow servant faithful minister of christ so he's referring to epaphras as a fellow servant and faithful minister and who has declared to them which is which means he's brought a good report about the church in colosse uh, back to paul and his teammates right? declared to us your love in the spirit okay so then he says in verse 9 okay let's read that for this reason we also since the day we heard it do not cease to pray for you and to ask okay so this is what it starts with so paul is saying we do not cease to pray which means i have not stopped stopped praying for you and to ask okay this is something that i've been praying for you unceasingly without stopping this is something that i've been praying for you okay we're going to read that okay um since the day we heard it do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding that you may walk worthy of the lord fully pleasing him being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of god strengthened with all might according to his glorious power 
for all patience and long suffering with joy giving thanks to the father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the lord okay so these are things that they have been he's been praying what are some of those let's list them okay so that first of all he says that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will okay that you may know the knowledge, you may have the knowledge of his will what is god's will in all areas of their lives you know what is god's will for them okay so he's praying and saying i pray that god will fill you with the knowledge of his will okay so this is something that we can pray for us we can pray for others maybe the churches that we are you know overseeing maybe some fellowship that we are overseeing you know in a place of spiritual leadership this is something that we can pray that they may be filled with the knowledge of god's will okay um in all wisdom and all and and spiritual understanding okay what is god's will for them you know and what is uh, in all wisdom and spiritual understanding okay the second thing is this, is that you may walk worthy of the lord okay so that's something that over and over again paul emphasizes to the believers you know that you may live your life that you may conduct your life your speech your thoughts your actions might be done in a way or you might live your life let your lifestyle be in such a way that is worthy of the lord jesus right why because he has done something amazing right he has given up his life he died on the cross for your sake he died he rose again he reversed the curse of sin right the consequence of sin he reversed it uh, on the cross and in its place he has given us something far more precious therefore walk worthy of the lord right walk worthy of the lord fully pleasing him okay which means completely pleasing him in all that you do right fully please him and being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of god so this is something that he's praying you know that you know as believers you know let you you you, you don't stop at a certain level when it comes to the knowledge of god right when it comes to uh, the understanding of god when it comes to the scriptures and everything knowledge of god you know don't stop at a certain level don't plateau off but we pray that you may be filled with the will of god with the knowledge of uh, god uh of his will knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding and that you may walk worthy of him right walk worthy of the lord and uh, and then he says you know being fruitful in every good work being productive you know being uh, successful in every good work um being fruitful in every good work and uh, increasing which means continuing to increase okay it's not that one time thing increasing in the knowledge of god okay so pleasing god you know have this desire to bring him delight to please god okay we pray that you'll be fruitful that is you'll be effective in your good work that you'll be successful in your good work uh in every everything that is good and increasing okay growing more and more in what in the knowledge of god so the word knowledge is talking about uh, you know that that word which is used there epignosis normally is used uh, only for the knowledge of god you know divine so it's something that is good something that is not corrupted it's ethical and it is divine so uh that you would increase in this knowledge that you would increase in the knowledge of god let's uh, okay let's just move this there uh verse 10 right yeah verse 9 10 okay so that's the second thing and then he says strengthened with all might according to his glorious power for all patience and long suffering with joy okay so 
uh, work worthy, fully pleasing Him. You be fruitful, uh, increasing in the knowledge of God. So He's praising, praying all that. So we see that okay, filled with the knowledge of us is one thing. Then the second thing is walking worthy. Third thing, being fruitful in every good work. Fourthly, increasing in the knowledge of God. And uh, fifthly, He says, "You're strengthened with all might, according to His glorious power." Okay, so. And not only this, but you, you know, not only knowledge and understanding, but you strengthened with all might. Strengthened with what? So he's talking about the fact that you need to be strong. You know, something that is that we see in Ephesians chapter six, right? Be strong in the Lord, and in the power of His might. Okay. So for strength, and he uses that word dunamo, which means uh, you know to be strong, um, to be um, established with what? With all power. Strengthened with all might, sorry, with all might, and that word is again dunamis. Okay, strengthened with all might, dunamis. Okay, so I think uh, we've kind of reached the end of uh, this class. Time for this class. So um, we'll stop here with verse eleven, and we'll continue, continue on in verse. Um, yeah, continue with verse eleven. Stop with verse ten. Okay, right. Thank you. God bless. Uh, we'll meet again next week. Oh, by the way, tomorrow we will not have our IRP class. Um, I just want you to connect, continue with your. I'll post some links to help with the project. Uh, I mean, the report writing, some videos. Um, you can look at that, and um, and also just want to uh, ask you to just continue with the IRP work. Okay. So I'll put it on the screen, and you can look and you can check that. Pick those videos out. Okay. Fine. Thank you. God bless. Bye-bye.